Welcome to another edition of Inside Medicine. I am your host, Doug Geinzer, and we are here in the studio today with Dean Stowe Shoemaker and Dr. Priyanka Joshi from the UNLV School of Hospitality. For those of you that are new to Inside Medicine, we broadcast live here in the studio every Thursday at 10 o'clock. And we bring in the movers and the shakers, those people that are doing great things in healthcare, uh, sometimes from a clinical perspective, sometimes from a medical tourism perspective, medical education. And today we're going to talk a little bit about bringing hospitality into the delivery of medicine. Something that's new. It's not really new out there, but it's important because uh, it brings a, a better touch to the patients that are out there. So, uh, Dean Shoemaker and Dr. Uh, uh, Joshi, welcome to the studio. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's great to be here. Doug. Yeah, great to have you. You're, you've been here a few times before in the past. So I've been uh, very fortunate in that way, yes. Yeah, well, thank you all for coming. Before we get started, uh, Dr. Joshi, I want to learn a little bit more about you. Okay. So give us a little background. What to, you know, where did you go to college? Where did you get you? You've got your PhD. Uh, so tell us a little bit about your background before we get started so our audience gets to know you. Keep in mind our audience, it's made up of those that are in the healthcare profession, uh, physicians, nurses, physical therapists, administrators, and those that serve the healthcare industry. So it's a very niche, unique audience. So we're able to use those acronyms and those buzzwords and they'll, they'll know what we're saying. Perfect. So I, my background is in management. Mm -hmm. I did a PhD in management from University of Southern California. Mm -hmm. My research really looked at what can we do to make people feel more connected to their future. We know that there's a large gap between people's, pe what people want to do in their future and what they do mm -hmm. about their future. For instance, if you ask somebody, do you want $100 now or $120 one year from now, most people will pick hundred dollars now because they feel more connected to their present self than their future self mm -hmm. and my research looks at what can we really do to connect people to their future selves so that they save more money they you know eat better they exercise more and give up sacrifice their present self for the benefit of their future self and so this was the research i was doing i was interested in applications in the healthcare context especially looking at what can we do to make people feel more empowered to make fe people feel more powerful in the healthcare setting so that they go back home and make better choices for their long-term health. You asked me about my own background, so I have to tell you a little bit about where I come from. So I was born in India, I lived there for 22 years, came to Iowa for a master's program in psychology. Wow, okay. So my background is really social psychology and then I was interested in applying social psychology and uh, group-related concepts to management and um, particularly now to uh, the field of healthcare. So how did you pick healthcare? That's a unique way to look at applying it. Obviously, you've got a background in psychology right. and you've got this master's and this PhD. How did that all come together? Right. Um, that, that's an interesting question. So, um, you know, I'd... Because of my background in psychology, I was ac actually worked as a clinical psychologist for two years, and I'd always been interested in healthcare and um, the kind of decisions people make about their health. The idea really here being that what can we do to make, pe you know, to make people make better choices for their mm -hmm. future health? So that's kind of, I could see that some of my work could be applied to this healthcare context. I was particularly interested in physician communication so how does physician communication influence uh, patient outcomes? And, uh, you know, I, I started out as a lab experimentalist doing a lot of work on the effect of people's communications. And uh, I thought that healthcare was a really good context to study some of the questions I was interested in. That's awesome. Dr. Shoemaker, you've obviously yes. spent your fair share of time in the healthcare space as well. I have. You've been done. You've done an amazing job of bringing this notion of hospitality and healthcare into the UNLV Hos School of Hospitality. Yes, College of College, Hospi College of Hospitality. College yes. of Hospitality. So it's uh, first. Let's talk about the change of the name, and then let's talk about uh, why you brought Dr. Uh, Joshi on board and what that looks like. Okay. Well. So we're very excited to change the name of our college. For the first 50 years, we were known as the William F. Hare College of Hotel Administration. But what we teach today is so much more than kind of hotel management. You know, we obviously are doing a lot now in healthcare, 
We've done stuff in, you know, food and beverage, meetings and events, of course, the gaming side. So we felt that in order to be more broad based, we should change our name to the College of Hospitality. So that's how it came about. Very fitting. I, I, yeah. I Kudos to that. Yeah. So we were very excited. And so our first 50 years, we were hotel administration. And for the future, it's all College of Hospitality. And, and tying in healthcare became really a natural. Um, you and I have talked in the past, of course. And when I was at the University of Houston is when I really started doing work with the medical community in Houston with Memorial Hermann Healthcare System and, of course, MD Anderson. And when I came back to Las Vegas, I just knew that Las Vegas was ripe. You know, here we are, the number one hospi- known for hospitality. And how do we bring all this great knowledge we have in the hotels, in the restaurants, everywhere you go in Las Vegas, it's all hospitable. How do we make sure that that gets translated to our medical community? And it's more than just being nice to people. It's really kind of a whole structure on how we organize hospitality principles. I think we're finding that uh, the more engaged the patient is with the practitioner, the better outcomes that come about. And uh, I'm sure your research validates all that. How did the two of you come together? Well, it's an interesting story because we were looking for a faculty line in really organizational behavior communication. And I was, it was very important for me that we find someone who was interested in, in healthcare. And so, you know, Priyanka interviewed, um, we offered her a position, but her husband's a a physician, which you'd, which she has not mentioned. So he's a doctor Mm -hmm. and he was doing his residency and he elected to do his residency somewhere else. So she turned us down oh, very no. unfortunately, but then, um, we had an, we had another position. And so we asked her to come back to interview for that. And then unfortunately we turned her down. <laughs> <laughs> so our time, you know, it's sort of like dating our timing just never fit, <laughs> but, but her husband actually came here and is doing a residency at Mountain View. Ah, perfect. So we found the perfect fit for her within this, this project, which is funded by United Healthcare. That's cool. Uh, Tell us about that. So United Healthcare stepped up. They made a substantial donation to the School of Medicine, which the School of Hospitality collaborates on. That's very, very much so. And when that grant came through, you know, one of the key things was how do we bring, you know, patient experience into healthcare and how do we bring our hospitality principles? So I was very fortunate that people had read some of my articles in the Journal of Clinical Radiology with the work I'd done with MD Anderson. And I spent a lot of time with Barbara Atkinson at the medical school. And she said, we really want this grant to be part of it. And so with Priyanka's background, I said, you need to move to Vegas. You need to work with us on this project. And it's been just phenomenal. I mean, I was, you know, if, if she had ended up teaching with us, she probably wouldn't have had as much time to do the work on healthcare. So it's been an ideal marriage. So Priyanka, you're spending your time working with the medical students themselves. Tell us about that experience. How are they receiving this? And tell us a little bit more about how that all comes together. So we have a batch of uh, 60 students, and they're truly phenomenal. They're so intelligent. They're so smart. And uh, they're very receptive of this information. The amazing thing is that they've all been through the healthcare system. So all these, you know, 60 students have at some point seen a doctor, and many of them have ended up with uh, not-so-satisfactory experiences themselves. And so we really leverage their own experiences to teach them about you know, patient experience. What can we do to make the patient experience better? And uh, they have a lot of good ideas. And I think much of you know, healthcare, we spend a lot of time teaching doctors about the clinical side of medicine, the biomedical mm-hmm. side. And I think it's equally important uh, to teach medical students to be aware of patient expectations and patient values and how can you tailor your practice and you know your treatment plan to the particular patient so really personalizing medicine is not just about personalizing medicine to the genetics of a patient or to their physiological you know uh, history but it's really also about considering the patient's values and uh, patient preferences patient expectations what do patient wants about you know what do the patients want about the quality of service. What is? Uh, do you want a really superior doctor? Do you care about the front desk staff? Do you care about the atmosphere around you? And uh, I, I think they're they're very understanding. 
they realize the are, importance. Are there any other uh, schools or colleges of medicine out there that you're aware of that are taking this approach? Because I don't think I've heard of any other school bringing hospitality into the curriculum of medicine. Not at such an early phase. So I've heard about some programs teaching their residents about communication, but not truly hospitality, not about service. And I think that that is so exceptional about our school that you know part of the vision statement is really teaching hospitality to our students. It's amazing that you had the foresight to see that. It's amazing that United Healthcare stepped up and saw the benefit and the value of this and made that con- that substantial contribution. You've got to be proud. That's that's a big step. I'm, I'm very proud, and I, I could not be more proud of just the School of Medicine. As they, as Barbara was beginning to start the school, she said, I want to do something very different, and let's figure out how we can work together. And, and that's what's exciting about, you know, at, at UNLV, we talk about being daring. We be about being different. And, and that's really what we're doing. So it's really a, a great partnership that, that the School of Medicine said, let's do something different. They came to us. We said, let's do something different also. And, and we've really had fun. You know, we spent a lot of time, even before the class started, really laying out, okay, what we needs to be taught. We worked with um, Ellen Con- Cosgrove, looking at the curriculum and how do we make sure that we get sort of really integrated in the doctoring series. So that it was just a lot of really, really good collaboration between the School of Medicine and Priyanka and I went out and we met with all the department chairs and they were just really excited about sort of what we were doing. And it's been a great partnership with everybody. That's great. And most of our viewers know that the, the School of Medicine here at UNLV, it's, uh, they're in their first year. Uh, It's the newest medical school in the country. Uh, They started out with 60 students, all 60 of which are fully scholarshiped, which allowed them to select the best of the best that were out there. Those that may not have had the uh, financial ability or just the ability to attend medical school. And uh, they're really building a world class school. And this is unique that they're bringing this program in at the early stage. And you've already been teaching the students. Now, do they take the this this uh, this content and is it distributed throughout their entire time that they're in yes. uh, the school of throughout medicine the four years. Yes. wow and so the next class that comes in you're now going to have to teach almost two tracks right yes and that's that is amazing let me ask this and this is probably a question that a lot of people are asking does this hurt the delivery of clinical content there's got to be some people that are saying well they're there to go to medical school should they be learning hospitality and why do they need to learn that? And I think you touched on that, but can you take that a little bit deeper? I, I think your concern is, uh, you know, it's resonated by other people. I've heard people ask me, is this going to be distracting for the students? And I think absolutely not. And the most amazing thing now is that the faculty are on board. They realize mm-hmm. the importance of the content that we are teaching. And I hope to talk a little more about exactly what we're teaching our mm-hmm. students at some point. And I think uh, what is, you know, finally, uh, you know, with the HCAP scores, and also just as doctors, uh, these uh, these students care about what their patients think of them. You know, mm-hmm. we know that there are going to be more and more online reviews of doctors, yeah. and uh, these students themselves, when they visit doctors, they go and read the reviews, and we all want to know that we've done a good job. So we want to make sure that our patients are satisfied, that they're happy with the way we're serving them. And most of them want to provide the best quality of care. And they do want to know how to do it. And that's exactly what we're teaching them. We're teaching them how can you be the best doctors. It's it's funny, but you can always, you know, you can evaluate. You can't really evaluate the quality of a CD scan or of the treatment that you've received. But you can evaluate, but as a patient, you can evaluate the quality of the service you've received. Yep. Have you really been cared for? And uh, we want to make sure that we are treat, we're training our doctors the right way so that they, they're empathic, they're truly patient-centered. Yeah. I think as patients, we all benefit from good communication with our practitioner. Right. Uh, how many practitioners come in and... Uh, they just they expect you to know, and right. you don't. Right. And we want that practitioner to empathize with us and share what's going on and really set realistic, clear expectations. And I think this program is going to do just that. 
Um, tell us, we, you touched on age caps, and uh, Dr. Shoemaker, I know you've spent some time looking at that. Yes. That's important in healthcare today. Can you tell us a little bit why? So, the way that <laughs> Medicare is, is being reimbursed is a lot based on what are the outcomes of the patient. And part of those outcomes are based on patient satisfaction scores. So after you visit a doctor, visit a hospital, you're sent a basically a satisfaction survey. And then those satisfaction scores are used for reimbursement. So giving a hypothetical example, if you would normally get a reimbursement of $100, um, some percentage, let's say 10%, I, I think the, the exact number may be six, but I can look that up. So if you may only get $90, but then if your satisfaction scores reach a cer certain level, you'll get some number plus that $90. So there's a financial incentive. There's a huge financial incentive. But I think the bigger issue, and, and, and Priyanka and I have discussed this, is if you're a patient and you have terrible service with a doctor, then you may not want to go to the doctor. So rather than going and getting preemptive care, you kind of wait till it gets the worst, and then you end up going to an emergency room. Where if you have a great experience with your doctor, then you might not feel so bad to say, oh, you know, it's kind of, I don't feel quite well, but my doctor's always so helpful. I'm going to go see them. We can get you cured early rather than waiting till we end up putting you in an emergency room at a much more higher cost. And I think consumer reviews, really, you touched on that. You know, how many times do we go to Amazon and the first thing that we do is we look at, is that a four star? Is that a five star? And okay, there's five. Are there over a couple hundred or is that there are five buddies that went up there and gave them five stars? So can you tell us about that? We actually did an assignment with our students where we asked them to get into groups and uh, read Yelp reviews of doctors. Oh, I'll bet that was interesting. <laughs> yeah. And, and it's, it's amazing what a lot of the doctoring faculty thought that was a bad idea because they didn't want anyone to read their reviews. And so we suggested that, well, you know, don't don't read the doctor, don't read about doctors, you know, but you know, find find random doctors and read about them. And uh, interestingly, most you know, they we we asked them to think about themes and patterns, and think about you know, are are patients having a problem with the core product, which is a doctor's knowledge, versus the supplementary services, which is you know, the front desk staff the kind of food they receive at the hospital, mm -hmm. the nursing staff. And interestingly, most of the complaints were about front desk staff or about some of these other supplementary services, such as uh, the billing department calling them up and bothering them uh, repeatedly about you know, the same bill. And so, so we see that, you know, th and it's reflective of the doctor. Unfortunately, the reviews of the doctors are influenced by all these other supplementary services that they haven't been focusing on. So that's interesting. So it's not just the doctor that the patient's reviewing, but the doctor is the one that is affected by it because it's based upon the moment that you arrive in the reception area to how you're handled. You know, we always hear the insurance card and driver's license, please. Has oh, exactly. anything changed? And they aren't even looking at you. <laughs> right, right. Wow. And so we're, we're really hoping to change that. We're trying to drive their attention to all these different touch points that the patient experiences when they visit a doctor. Our hope at, at, is that, you know, our, our students are, uh, will be in the field in their first semester. So they are going and uh, doing their rotations. I'm, I'm not sure if rotations is the right word, but they go and uh, visit all these uh, hospitals and they follow doctors and observe them. And we want to make sure that they're not only observing the physician's clinical uh, knowledge and the way the physician is communicating, but also all these service aspects that uh, most of the times physicians ignore, but are super important. So you're teaching these doctors hospitality and healthcare. What are the concepts? How do you do that? And uh, you know, it, it's such a wide, it's such a broad uh, subject. So we've we've really uh, kind of uh, gone down and decided. What are the most important topics that we need to expose our students to? So some of the basics about services, about concepts such as core product versus supplementary services. Uh, one of the important concepts is really understanding about uh, the uncertainty involved in all services. So unlike a product where when you buy an iPhone, you know exactly what you're buying. You kind of touch it, you, you, know, you feel your neighbor's uh, iPhone, you can play with it around. You can play around with it. 
but uh, when it comes to services, you don't always know what you're buying. It's very hard to evaluate a service, especially healthcare, where even after you have, you know, even after you've gone through the service, after you've experienced, you've purchased the service, you've experienced the service, you still don't know how to evaluate it. Did my doctor treat me in the best way possible? I don't know. I, I'm hoping that they did. So there's there's a lot of this uncertainty and risk that is involved with services, and um, it's particularly high in healthcare. And so we want our doctors to realize that they can, you know, they have to realize that this patients are already anxious. They're in this negative situation. They don't, you know, most of the times we don't really want to visit our doctors. Uh, we have a disease, we're not particularly happy, so they're going through all these negative emotions. On top of that, there's all this risk and uncertainty involved about the service that they will receive. You know, I don't know if my doctor will see me at the right time. Will I be waiting outside for 15 min minutes versus 45 minutes? And so whatever a physician can do to reduce this risk and uncertainty will make the patient feel better, will make the patient feel more empowered, will lead to a better patient experience. So and, that's, sorry, go ahead. I'm sorry, because, and, and that gets to, when we talk about sort of some of the service models that we use, we use the, the loyalty circle, which, you know, readers of, of your magazine, we were on the cover of, sort of talking about the process, everything that happens from the time the patient begins to think of doing business with you to the time they leave, the, the value, how do we add value to that, to their visit, whether it's temporal, financial, social, emotional value, and then the communication side. So that's one model that we've been teaching. The other model is kind of the gap model of mm -hmm. service quality, which has been around for a long time, but really looks at where are the gaps in expectations. And by taking the doctors through those different things, it helps them, kind of provides a framework for them to think about this interaction. That's very cool. So you're six months in on this. Uh, yes, in, teach, in, in, terms te teaching, in terms of teaching. Yes. How yes. is that being received, and what are your early indicators of success? Uh, the students really enjoyed our uh, workshops. They, uh, from, from the reviews that I've read, they were very happy, and they wanted us to come back and do this every uh, few months. And uh, I think the doctoral and faculty have been on board. What's interesting is we are actually doing research on our teaching because we want to make sure that we're teaching the right content matter. Mm -hmm. So we're measuring our students' attitudes before they take our workshops and after we take after they take our workshops. Interestingly, uh, the the attitudes of the students about communication and about service are predictive of their performance on. Uh, OSCEs, which are really simulated patient cases. So they have these fact, you know, the students go through yeah. these simulated patients. Uh, they, you know, talk to the patient, provide a treatment plan. Their faculty evaluates them. And their attitudes about communication are, in fact, predictive of the ratings given by their faculty. So we know that attitudes matter. We're trying to change the attitudes. So that's been our approach. So that's great. You're doing research and... and Dr. Shoemaker, this is music to your ears. It You're is. all That's about why I'm research. Smiling. Yeah. And so, where is research in hospitality and healthcare going? What does that look like in the future? Well, I think a, a lot of it, and I can really just speak to what I'm seeing in the journals. It's it's like the the Journal of Clinical Radiology is starting to look at at this at what are we doing in healthcare in terms of hospitality. So, I think a lot of it's going to be is you know patients are different than hospitality customers. Mm -hmm. And and what, what we, when we talk in, in the hospitality space, we talk about customers all the time. But what we found in the research we've done with Mountain View, with MD Anderson, is that patients don't want to be thought of as patients, they don't want to be thought of as customers, but they want to be thought of as loved family members. So I think we're gonna see a lot more research in going two, two ways. One, which is the, the way that Priyanka's really going, and what we're doing with with this grant is really looking at the communication and how do we teach doctors to be, be better at communication, communicating? And then what are the outcomes from that? And then I think the other side is gonna be much more looking at, as we look at different, you know, the person who's going in for, for cancer treatment has very different needs and concerns than the patient going in for like ankle surgery. And so I think what we're gonna start to see is, is within these different treatments, are patients thinking differently? 
And how do we then adjust our, our level of service differently based on patients' expectations? So I think we're going to see much more of that. That's very good. So you're bringing this curriculum into the School of Medicine. You also have the PLUS Center that's part of the college. How does this plug into the PLUS Center, and where do you see some of that training coming about in the upcoming years? Well, that's a, that's a great question, Doug, and thank you. So our PLUS Center is really our the extent executive education arm of our hospitality college. And what we see really where this comes into play, play is a lot of the research we're doing is how do we turn this research then into courses that we can then, you know, the physicians can actually buy. And the way we're doing this is we're breaking them into sort of one hour courses that are really 10, six, 10 minute increments that talk about service process, talk about communication. And so using really healthcare examples to really tie in, like if we wanted to do a course, for instance, uh, what is service experience? You know, when you think about a service, what is that? And how do we create a great service experience? What we'll do is we'll take all the research that Priyanka has been doing and then we'll create vignettes. And so we'll teach people about the gap model of service quality. And within each of those gaps that are, you know, been theoretically proven, we'll show examples from healthcare, and that's how we see it really tying in. And so then, as a as a physician, I want to know something about service expectation. I don't have a lot of time to go spend three days at a symposium, but I would like to know a short little thing. I'd like to know some stuff that I could give to my employees. And they can take an hour, they can do it on their phone, they can do it while they're at home, they can do it on their lunch break, and it becomes a very interactive way to learn. That's great. So practitioners, not only those that are in med school, those that have gone through residency fellowship programs and are out there practicing, will be able to access this and get continuing education. Exactly. And and I think, especially if, you're, if you have low HCAP scores, what, gee, I have my low HCAP scores, I seem to be getting beat up pretty badly on on friendliness. Well, it's much more than just telling you your people to smile. Well, now we they can t- take a course, learn from Priyanka's research, and really show how do I create that happiness. Very good. Well, our show, unfortunately, is about to come to an end. We could probably go on for another half hour, yes. but unfortunately, we can't. It- <laughs> so I want to thank the both of you for coming on. Dr. Joshi, it's a pleasure to have you thank on the you, show. Dr. Shoemaker, welcome back, and you're welcome any time that you'd like to come back. The work that you all are doing in the healthcare industry is utterly amazing. Very proud that it's happening right here in our backyard in Las Vegas, and that it's tied to the UNLV School of Medicine. This is great stuff, and I think years to come we're going to look back, and it's it all started here. So thank you both for being here. For those of you that are with us, uh, we, we broadcast live in the studio every Thursday. We will be dark next week over the holiday, but we will be back in 2018, and we will continue to talk about the great things happening in healthcare, including things such as hospitality and healthcare. So welcome, or thank you for coming to the studio, and happy holidays to all. Thank you very much. It's been great.